Church family. My name is Beth Jones and it is great to join you as we explore God's Word together. Please take a moment to pause this video and pray together as a family. This week we are reviewing lessons 8 through 11. We will walk through each lesson individually and take time to discuss throughout. First up is lesson 8. Jesus rebukes the Pharisees, focusing on Matthew 12, 22 to 37. The central truth is Jesus condemns those who say his power comes from Satan. Lesson 8 focused on three key parts of the passage. Jesus was accused by the Pharisees, verses 22 through 24. Jesus miraculously healed a man who was possessed by a demon and couldn't talk or see. This made many people question if Jesus was the Messiah they were waiting for. However, the Pharisees claimed that Jesus was able to cast out demons by using the power of demons himself. We know that isn't true. Jesus refuted the Pharisees, verses 25 through 29. Jesus pointed out that a kingdom divided against itself doesn't last very long. It would make no sense for demons to work against each other. Instead, Jesus pointed out that it is by the Spirit of God that He is able to cast out demons, so the kingdom of God was near. Jesus accused the Pharisees, verses 30 through 37. Jesus continued on, declaring that the sin the Pharisees committed by saying that Jesus' power came from Satan could not be forgiven. He speaks very harshly against the Pharisees for being deceptive and evil. If the Pharisees were as good of people as they claimed, they would not be able to speak such lies. Jesus says that our words are incredibly important. How can our words show the nature of our hearts? Jesus explains this in the last section of the passage, verses 34 through 37. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Our mouths speak what our hearts are filled with. If you treasure sin, your words will be wicked and evil. But if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, which Jesus said is the greatest commandment, then your words will be honoring to God. If the things that we say are good and encouraging and bring glory to God, then they show that we love the Lord with all of our hearts. Second is lesson nine. Jesus teaches the parable of the soil, focusing on Mark 4, 1 through 20. The central truth is, Entering the kingdom of God depends on how you receive the word of God. Lesson 9 focused on three key parts of the passage. Listen to the parable of four soils, verses 1 through 9. While Jesus was talking with a very large crowd, he taught with many parables. One parable was about four soils. A farmer scattered seeds which landed on different grounds. Some fell on the path and the birds ate it. Some fell on rocky places where the plants started to grow quickly, but there was not enough soil for the plants to survive in the harsh sun. Others fell among thorns which grew around the plants so they weren't healthy. The last of the seeds landed in good soil where they grew and produced a large crop. Accept the reason for the parables, verses 10 through 12. Jesus talked privately with his disciples and explained that the kingdom of God could only be understood by people that God revealed it to. Many people in the crowd wanted to see miracles but didn't actually care to learn what Jesus was teaching. B. 
Because they did not listen to what was clear, Jesus spoke in parables to make things even less clear, just like God told the prophet Isaiah would happen. Understand the four kinds of hearers. Verses 13 through 20. Jesus then explains the meaning of this parable. Each type of soil is a different way that you can hear and respond to God's word. When some people hear God's word, Satan comes and takes the word away. Others hear the word and receive it with joy, but they're never truly changed. This second group lacks the faith to continue in the hardships that face Christians. The third group wants the things they can get from Jesus, but do not want Jesus himself. The final group are people who truly hear, accept, and are changed by God's word. Why does it matter how we respond to God's word? Jesus answered this right after the passage we looked at. In Mark 4.24, Jesus said, Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. If you listen to God's word, but do not care for it, trust it, or love it, then God will make it even harder for you to understand his word. But if you listen well, seek to understand, and take Christ's message to heart, then he will teach you more and more, even things which you could not understand at first. Next is lesson 10. Jesus demonstrates his authority, focusing on Luke 8, 22 through 39. The central truth is Jesus is God. Lesson 10 focused on two key parts of the passage. First, we see Christ's divine power over nature, divine love for the faithless in verses 22 through 25. In this section, Jesus led his disciples to cross the Sea of Galilee. While they were in the middle of the sea, a storm came that was so strong, the disciples thought their boat was going to sink. In their fear, they woke Jesus from a nap, crying out that they were going to die. Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and waves, and they stopped, and there was a calm. The disciples were amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? Then we see Christ's divine power over the supernatural, divine love for the unclean, in verses 26 through 39. When Jesus and the disciples got off the boat, they were met by a man with many demons. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house, but among the tombs. The man with the demons recognized Jesus as the Son of the Most High God, and he begged him to be sent into a herd of pigs instead of facing judgment. Jesus agreed, and the man was freed from the many demons that had seized him. The man who was set free told the entire city about what Jesus had done for him. But the people of the city were scared of Jesus and told him to leave. How do the events in this passage show that Jesus is God? Jesus shows that he is God by demonstrating his authority over creation and the supernatural. Jesus shows his authority over nature by telling the storm to stop. Psalm 65, 7 specifically calls the Lord the one who will still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. No one but God has authority over nature. Jesus then shows his authority over all the supernatural by commanding the demons to leave the man. Psalm 110 tells of the Lord defeating all of his enemies, and Revelation 20 tells of the coming day when Christ will defeat Satan. God has authority over all people and all spirits. Jesus is able to cast out demons because he is God. Finally, Lesson 11. Jesus has power over disease and death. 
focusing on Mark 5, 21 through 43. The central truth is Jesus' power is personal and kind. Lesson 11 focused on four key parts of the passage. First, a father trusted Jesus, verses 21 through 24. Jairus, one of the leaders of the synagogue, had a daughter who was so sick that she was about to die. Jairus came to Jesus and begged him to come heal her. So Jesus went with Jairus. Then a woman trusted Jesus, verses 25 through 28. While Jesus was on the way to heal Jairus' daughter, a woman who had been sick for 12 years came to Jesus. She had seen many doctors, but none of them were able to heal her. This woman had heard about Jesus and trusted that he would be able to heal her even when no one else could. Next, Jesus showed power and pity to the woman. Verses 29 through 34. When the woman touched Jesus' clothes, she was immediately healed. Jesus knew that she had been healed and turned to find her, even though he was in a hurry to heal Jairus' daughter. The woman came forward and explained to Jesus why she had touched him. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Finally, Jesus showed power and pity to the daughter. Verses 35 through 43. While Jesus was still talking with the woman, messengers came from Jairus' house, telling Jairus that his daughter had died. Jesus told Jairus to have faith and brought the daughter back to life. Jesus instructed the family not to tell anyone about what he did and asked for someone to bring the girl some food. How do the events in this passage show that Jesus' power is personal and kind? Jesus meets the needs of several individuals in this passage. First, he agrees to go with Jairus, even though Jesus has barely made it off the boat. Instead of putting himself first, Jesus agreed to help Jairus. Then, Jesus stopped to talk with the sick woman, even though he was in a hurry to heal Jairus' daughter. Jesus could have focused on getting where he was going and ignored those around him. Instead, Jesus healed the woman and stopped to talk with her. Finally, Jesus paid attention to the individual needs of the girl by bringing her back to life and instructing for food to be brought. Through these lessons, we saw that Jesus is God and that His power is personal and kind. The way that we receive the Word of God determines whether we are accepted into the Kingdom of God or condemned for rejecting Jesus' authority. So, how will you respond to what you have heard in God's Word.